All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 88 of the Generation Gaming Podcast. I am your host this week, Tyler, and I also have with me, straight out of Tennessee, we got Jack. I mean, Jake. <laughs> Sorry. Jack took the spit. God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Like, I just choked on my fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, also, did you say the city of Tennessee? I said, uh, the, straight, I said straight out of Dying. Tennessee. Oh, Jake, okay. express yourself. <clears throat> uh, I can't do it. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, Jake here. <laughs> Fucking talking about NWA thanks to the freaking, what was it, out of Compton trailer? Straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton trailer. And... Now we're all repping beanies and pretending <laughs> we're in the WA. Yes. Because <laughs> we definitely aren't the wildest kids you know. No. <laughs> How you doing, uh, Todd? I'm doing pretty good, man. You know, I'm just, um... Uh, uh, never mind. I'm not, I was going to try to rap, but it, didn't, it wasn't going to go very well. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, I've just been doing all this yeah. dope producing, you know. Whatever. Anyways. Uh, we also have... <laughs> this as far as I'm going to go with it. Jack, how you doing, man? Oh... Well, besides the first couple minutes ago, <laughs> I, uh, I've i actually been doing okay. Oh, man. Last week after uh, we got done recording our podcast, I got down and I got uh, freaking sick again. Got back up again? Cold. Yeah. I got back <laughs> up and I went back down. <laughs> no, chumba wumba. Jump, jump, jump around. <laughs> House of pain? Gotta, gotta get up to get down. Jesus anyway. Christ, we're all over the place today. <clears throat> yeah, no. But anyway, I did... Uh, I just got this bad, like, cold or something. Like, a sinus infection I had earlier on this month returned, like, literally a day after I returned back from going to Port Townsend after we, re- like, recorded and stuff like that. So, it's, like, just struggling with that, just going through the whole coughing, like, sneezing ordeals and shit. But, <clears throat> along that time, at least I got a chance to play some good games and stuff. And I got the weekend off of work, so, that wasn't all that bad. That's always huh. good. All right, very nice. And uh, we also have a special guest this week. He's been on before. We have Sean. He's the monster. He's also, we're going to call him Sean the Man Stasiak, just because I can. What's up, buddy? <laughs> I'm doing good, Tyler. He's thanks for, thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> I was doing, like, the mm-hmm. ring entrance intro. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, as for the past week. It doesn't week, work well in the audio podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work well at all. Uh, but, um, yeah, today I finally got, like, a day off of work because I've been working, like, six days a week, so that's why I've never really been on the podcast that much. So, uh, yeah, just uh, took mm-hmm. the chance I got, and uh, that's why I'm here. All right. Nice. Very nice. So, uh, we, got, we got, I'm sure we got some we got some topics to talk about, and we also got some games to talk about. But I want to start with Jake here because we've been playing the same game. And I want to. I, I want to know. We, we go for last. Listen with the news. All right, let's go. Well, okay, that's right. Well, we're, you know, he's the guest. We'll we'll be. Uh, we'll let you All go right. first. Well, buddy. for the last week, I've been putting a lot of my time into Unity, and eh, I like it. I like it. I know. I I kind of want to get into detail more about it. Like, I want to first ask Tyler, how come you don't like it? Like, I don't think you really discussed as in why you don't like the game. Because I haven't seen any problems with it. Assassin's Creed Unity? Yeah, Assassin's Creed Unity, yes. Um, when did you start playing it? I started playing two days ago. Okay, so you missed, you probably, it's, it's patched, it's fixed now. So That's, you, yeah, Jake kind of mentioned that to me. Yeah, so you, you got it when it's all good and you're ready to go. It's just a normal Assassin's Creed. My biggest problem with it is as a, is obviously the glitches were bad, and for me, and that was the biggest thing, honestly, was the glitches, but for me, as someone who's played and finished every Assassin's Creed game, it's just kind of, it, it's turned into, like, we. it's a different setting, kind of, but it's mm-hmm. it's the same character over and over again. It's the same, we get the same, we've had the same guy every single time, and it, that's just, and it's just a boring-ass story. Uh, I, mean, I will say, though, the game, is it, it's one, probably one of the best-looking games out there on consoles. But that's just my biggest issue is we've been doing the same thing since two. We have the same gameplay mechanics. The the coolest thing they did since the game started 
and Black Flag with being a pirate, they said, oh, yeah, you guys love that? Awesome. It's gone. <laughs> and they took, they took away the best part of the game. Like, the, like the coolest thing, the coolest game I've played in, or game mechanic I've I played in probably 10 years, it took out. Got away with it. It's gone. All right. No, that, that's my issue. I mean, how many of the Assassin's Creed games have you played, though? Um, played all of them except for First and Rogue. So, um, yeah, I've, I've had my okay. deal. Okay, I've played. Uh, I get... But I've had my okay. share of Assassin's Creed games to play. Okay, yeah, Rogue is the only one I haven't played, and I just at this point I have no more interest in the Assassin's Creed series. Yeah, that's but understandable. How far, how... I heard. I keep hearing Rogue was better than. Unity. Yeah, everybody's saying that it's basically just more Black Flag. So. Yeah, Black Flag is amazing. I say it's yes, better that... than number two, which everyone loves. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it definitely is. If not, it's at least the best game since two in this series. Yeah, I agree with that too. Like my my only like harps with Unity is like sometimes I see like um like visually there's some parts of the game where it's just it's just I'm tired of looking at buildings twenty four seven. There's mm-hmm. buildings everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's like, give me a couple trees, a bush, <laughs> a shrub even. Oh, There's you, like nothing. We saw what happened when he gave you trees. We saw what happened when he gave you trees. And it says trees. Oh, oh, yeah. Barely uh, being able to climb up the damn nothing trees. Nothing but tree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do not speak of that one. Yeah, never happened. <laughs> I heard he wants trees, so let's give him a shit ton of trees. I just want a balance, no okay? I just want a balance. A, 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 nice, a nice balance. Like, it says Creed 4 had an amazing balance. Like, yes. or Black Flag had an amazing balance. And uh, even though a lot of it was covered with water, they made it fun by adding, like, plundering other ships and especially singing. If singing was not a part yes. of uh, Black Flag, I wouldn't have as much fun going on the waters. Kind of like in Wind Waker, where you go on the waters in Wind Waker, like, 24-7, got nothing to do, so you're just, like, playing a DS you know, not even paying attention until you get to your destination. <laughs> but this one, you actually feel, you know, um, like interested to keep the TV running and actually pay attention to what you're doing because there's like loot in the ocean to grab, like ships with materials that you might need to increase your ship's capabilities and that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's why yeah. I really like Assassin's Creed 4. Yeah, basically everything about Assassin's Creed 4, everything that was great about Assassin's Creed 4 was like the non Assassin's Creed stuff. <laughs> uh, everything about Assassin's Creed, <laughs> just like everything not about Assassin's Creed, uh, I just was... I love it. <laughs> but it's all good. But um, yeah, I like um, I, <laughs> yeah. But it's really hard to be an assassin in Unity, like to be sneaky and all that. Like in Four, I feel like they did it perfectly, but in this one, it's so hard to be sneaky in Unity. It is almost impossible. And whenever you're mm-hmm. being forced into combat, which is like 24, like 100% of the time, you do a memory sequence. Yep. Yeah. There's like 15 or 16 guys after you. And these are yes. just in single player missions. So I have like, like rage quit a couple of times doing these missions, just being barraged by a, like a ton of dudes. And you, and there's like... I don't know if they've done this in other Assassin's Creed games where after a fight, um, where your health heals, because I know that in 4 and in a lot of other ones, but in this one, you need medicine to get your health back no matter what, and yeah. that, that kind of sucks. Yeah, the, they've always, in some of them, they have like, rege- you regenerate some, somewhat, but they've always had like medicine cabinets, like cap- yeah. whatever you can use to, you know, just, just heal quickly. But I, yeah, I, I agree with you. Black that that one, I'm, uh, my, I can't remember. It's been so long since I played it. But no, I agree with you on that point, though. With with this one, it seems like it's more action based and less the sneaking, which was the sneaking part was that was the best part of the series. I think mm-hmm. the one that's the part that's how you be an assassin. Yeah, I think what it is is because this is the first one to have like co op in the main campaign. I think that's part of the reason why there's so many enemies and it's hard to be sneaky is because they wanted it. You know, four people right. trying to sneak in the one small area is really hard. So they just made it so you basically have to fight all the time. And the fighting in Assassin's Creed is not that fun. It's basically standing with your guard out and mm-hmm. counterattack. That's all you do. Yeah. Block, block, block. Parry, 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 parry. Knock him back. Yep. Parry, parry, knock him back. Yes. <laughs> that's 
pretty much that's the Assassin's Creed battling system right there. Yeah, but now in Unity, they don't give you the instant kill counter, which was my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Now it's just... <laughs> it takes forever to kill people now. So yeah, and there's really this, a constant barrage of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was my two cents about Unity. So, okay. Uh, what other games I've been playing? I know I played the PlayStation One recently, like two weeks ago. Wow! I went back. PlayStation One. Yeah, I went back and played Mega Man Legends One and Two. Okay. I don't know if you guys Holy played hell. them. Oh. I've heard of them. It's just Jack's like what? I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I play that game. Retro gaming. <laughs> what? Uh, every time it's like. I get so depressed every time I play that game. It's like, why did they cancel 3? Why did they cancel Mega Man <laughs> Legends 3? Ugh. Damn you, Capcom. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't Capcom's <laughs> fault on that one. <laughs> they canceled that game, then they gave you freaking 800. Uh, God, what was it? Was it Street Fighter 4 that's made yeah. by Capcom? Yes. Mm-hmm. Street Fighter's made by Capcom. Yeah. Yep, we get Street Fighter every year, but we can't get uh, another Mega Man. Nope. Which, God, what was that? Mighty Number no. 9? Yeah, that's Mega Man. Mega Man. Yeah, Mega Man. Mm-hmm. And KG Inafune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, isn't it the creator of Mega Man that's doing yes, that? Yes, KG Inafune oh, is doing yeah. that one. He's the creator? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Alright, and that's pretty so, much what I've been we'll doing get, for the week. We'll get another Mega Man game. Alright, very cool. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll jump in with Jack now, man. What have you been doing? Well, let's see. Ever since that I've started Majora's Mask, I've been playing that, like, uh, frequently. And it's kind of funny how this game has sort of taken me back to when I first... Like, memories of when I first played the game. And at the same time, it kind of made me rediscover some of the problems that I had even as a kid. And what I'm talking about, Hmm. like, specifically, is going into the first uh, temple inside Woodfall Temple. Well, Temple Temple. Anyway... I went inside, I had my great fairy mask and stuff, <laughs> and uh, I would be using it, like, periodically, right, because I'm trying just to see if uh, there are, like, fairies, like, hidden or something in the walls or something, I need to try to coax them out by wearing the great fairy mask. One of my friends, like, pointed it out to me and stuff, like, right after I got done, like, about, a, like, what, a day later or something like that, that if you, if I would have kept it on, if the mask would have glued, like, you know, gr- gr- like, a, no, glow... You know, it would have like some sort of like pink mm-hmm. glow or something to indicate if the fairy was actually inside that room or not. Yeah, that would have oh. been uh, that would have been really useful for me to know that beforehand because I almost spent the entire three days wasted just trying to find the <laughs> the rest of the fairies inside that temple. But what was funny about this was I went through the entire thing, the entire Woodfall Temple. I didn't have much problems at all. I had to go back and retrace my steps, like. Okay, where are these fairies at? It's like, I'm missing like about eight of them. And so I go back. I find that there are like four inside the final room before you get to the boss. And uh, mm-hmm. I could not find for the life of me a couple of them. I went through the rooms a couple times until I went online, like, uh, went onto YouTube. I found like this one random dude who is just basically posting like the 3DS like walkthrough of it. And uh, what I found out was uh, there are a couple of fairies hidden in beehives, right? And what's what's yep. kind of funny, the beehives are positioned, like, there's one that's positioned, like, right on the corner of the door, or one of the doors when you are going in and stuff. It's like, once you yeah. enter the door, you have this beehive that's, like, right behind you. I discovered, like, during this thing, there's, like, three separate beehives. I thought they were just scenery, because, for one, <laughs> you see them around, like, the... Like, say, the Woodfall area before you even go into, like, you know, the Southern Swamp area before you go into the temple. So, if you even try to, say, attack these beehives to try to discover what's in them, they usually would have bees inside of them, obviously. Yeah, they just attack you. <laughs> oh, that sucks. But, uh, so, right then and there, I thought in my mind, it's like, okay, if I attack these beehives, more than likely I'm going to get attacked by something. So, I went back, used the guide, I got... I just basically knocked down all the beehives, and I think only one of them had an actual bee in it. Two of them. Yeah, two, two of them. them. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yep. yeah, like about almost a couple of hours later, you know, after I entered inside this, uh, the Woodfall Temple, I finally went to, uh, the, fin- the final boss of it, Odalwa. Now, Odalwa, back in the 64 version of Majora's Mask, he had a specific type of pattern and stuff. 
where you could actually go ahead and like and hit him with a sword and stuff like that, hit him with the things. You didn't need to really cycle around him too much. I mean, yeah, he would like do various like uh, various type of attacks that uh, would have to revolve around you trying just to uh, dodge like the insects that are falling here and falling there and stuff. Inside this remake, immediately the first cutscene before you start, you see this gigantic eye in the back of his fucking head, and that is his weak yep. point. That is his new weak point. So what I basically went oh. ahead and did is, every time he'd be doing his little dance, he would purposely, this boss would purposely back himself against the, one of the walls and stuff to try to prevent me from using the Z-targeting to go all the way around the back of him, pull out my bow, shoot him in the freaking eye. So, for like about five minutes straight, I'm just sitting here, like as Link, Z-targeting him, I'm looking at him square in the eye, and I'm going, I'm doing left, right, left, right, getting right behind him, shoot, he's woozy, and like about three arrow shots later, I think, maybe two or three arrow shots, he falls on the ground, do sword slashes, and do all this shit, and, uh, after, like I said, after about like five minutes or so of doing this, I finally went ahead and I beat the boss, and just for kicks and giggles, I went back to YouTube to see the original boss battle, because... I knew for a fact they had changed some portions. I didn't know what exactly what else was changed about it. So basically, it took out a couple of his main attacks too, which, well, to get to really like uh, think back a bit, like uh, historically though, it made him kind of a little bit harder though back then too, because he had this sort of like spin attack mm -hmm. or something where you would not be able to block it. <laughs> you would have to try to somehow evade mm -hmm. while he's doing this big old spinning attack. But, uh, I guess the way I battled him, he was not able to get to it. I'm not too sure if maybe, you know, I beat him before he actually did that attack, because that happens sometimes whenever I play these type of games. He, he, he does the attack. What I did, actually, is, um, so I would just, like, I turn into the Deku, I go into the Deku, when he did the spin attack, I just hide in the Deku flower, wait for him to do the spin attack. The, quick, the easiest way to actually beat him was to just go into the, the like, just... Pop up, jump up out of the flower, and you, you hover above him, drop the Deku nuts on him, and it actually um, would stun him. It sounds really bad when I say that out loud. Um, <laughs> dropping Deku nuts on him. He basically teabagged um, him from the air. <laughs> yeah, I basically teabagged him from, from midair. And, skybagging. <laughs> He's skybagging. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I would, uh, he would immediately fall as one hit. Uh, from the Deku, god damn it, Deku nuts, and he would <laughs> fall down immediately. I just did that. It, I, I think it took him a minute and a half to finish to beat him, but that was just. The, but he would actually do the spin attack. You just gotta go. The only way to really avoid it was just the okay, high. I thought the I was Deku doing flower. something a little bit off right there because, like I said, the way I did it was just basically circle around him, use the arrows, did that a couple times, hit them slashing with swords, repeat and stuff. So I did it a little bit more like unconventional wise because they make it a point that it's just really obvious where you should go with some of the things. But I didn't really know because I didn't... I don't think I had very much Diku nuts, to be honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I didn't have the nuts with me. I'm sorry. But oh, what's God. funny about this, I finished off this boss battle with about four hours left in the final day. So... After oh, that wow. frustrating two-hour stint of me going through retracing my steps in this Woodfall Temple, I went ahead, took the Diku Princess, gave her back to the king, you know, that whole, like, happy story and whatsoever. But then it dawns on me, I gotta go to the butler and get the Mask of Sense if I'm going to finish off this damn thing. And I look at the time, I got, like, about two hours left. I'm like, oh, god mm -hmm. damn it. <laughs> so... Which is about like, five, like minutes about real five time. minutes real time. And I gotta say, that's one thing I have forgotten about this game. Like the added pressure, the added type of suspense you get if you say, you're constantly looking at the time. You're constantly trying to finish things as fast as you can so you can go back and just uh, go back to day one. So I eventually had to do, <laughs> I did the butler race like about three times and I finally finished the darn thing, got the mask of scent, went ahead and went back to Clock Tower with like about an hour left, and uh, I deposited, I think it was like about 200 rupees or so that I had with me, <laughs> that I just randomly collected, 
and I zoomed back all yeah. the way to day one. I'm like, oh, god damn, that was one of the most like daunting yet rewarding type of experiences I've had in a while. So I turned it off and I didn't touch it for like about a day. <laughs> but uh, when I did go back to it, yeah, <laughs> when I did go back to it, I just decided to do like a little kind of like a little bit of subsidiary like type of off day where i would just go ahead i would just be going forth and try to collect a little bit of the hard pieces and like the masks so right at this moment i'm like about i have a total of 12 hours inside this game i have gotten eight masks wow. including like the bunny hood and like the the bremen mask and stuff like like cafe's mask let's see i'm not too sure what else i know i got the dick mask and everything else that's that's just a given but uh, I have all these masks. I've got like about ten pieces of heart I found because I've been using that guide with me since I try to get every single heart piece. <laughs> but let's see. Other than that, yeah. I've been playing a bit of Kirby's Dream Line Two again. I touched upon it last week, but this week I have some good news. I collected every single rainbow drop, something I never could do as a kid, and I went through was facing off against the final boss yesterday and I beat the final boss which you know what that's that's just brings up something else that's kind of funny too so when you go to the final boss battle and coming off against like a possessed King DDD right and so you have to beat him and all of a sudden you're presented with this like uh this like shadowy figure just like just absum you know just like exercising itself in King DDD's body and so you're going to go ahead all those rainbow drops form into like form this big ass sword, and you have to try to battle against this uh, this just dude or something like in a robe. And once you beat him, after you figure out the pattern, you have to try to beat like like a manifestation of like his chaotic form or something like that. So it's basically like three boss battles in one, right? And its final form is like pretty much the hardest boss inside the game. Which, you know, it isn't saying much because a lot of the characters, the bosses, it's a Kirby game. They are easy. But this one was particularly hard because it was really difficult to recognize a lot of his patterns. Mm -hmm. I mean, he would do, like, uh, he would start off, like, just firing off, like, four projectiles, which you would have to try to hit back at its eye, you know, like, with uh, your sword. Then it would go and just, like, flash back and forth and stuff. But what really caught me off guard is these fucking black beams that would be shooting from its eye or something like that. I had to use save states. I had to use a couple save states to make sure that I was going to go progressively. Okay, I have about four bits of health left. I got to go ahead and save right here without getting hit. Go again. Whittle them down a couple things. Save again. Whittle them down. <laughs> That's what I love about new technology, too. If you play a, as hard as shit game or something like that, or if something gives you frustration, <laughs> I love it. Like when the 3DS, I could just save state on a virtual console game, and it's like, oof. Thank you. <laughs> but I finally beat it. But the last thing yep. that was preventing me from getting 100% is going back to uh, the boss rooms and getting collecting all the little random stars and stuff that uh, were presented in each world. So after that, I just 100% completed Kirby's Dream Land 2. First time I've ever done that. So, yeah, that's about it, though, for gaming-wise. Anyway, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, Jake Buddy. What have you been playing? Well, uh, earlier this week, uh, the new Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse came out, and I've been playing a little shit ton of that. Is yeah. this like a new IP or something? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know if you know this, called this small franchise, it's kind of an indie title, it's called Dragon Ball. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a really niche market. It sounds like a douchey indie title. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, but, like Braid uh, or something. Did not make it. <laughs> <laughs> was it purchased by Microsoft? Oh god! <laughs> Carry no, on, Jake. But uh, yeah, playing Xenoverse, I created my character. Character kind of looks like an adult version of Pan from late Dragon Ball Z and GT. Nice. Well, playing, creating my character, and whatnot. Having to, the whole premise of the game is. Someone's fucking up the timelines, so his trunk summons you to come help him restore uh, everyone's history. So basically, everyone's all the villains are getting super powered up, killing or beating all the heroes, and your job is to go back in time, 
protect Goku, which is pretty much the, basically Akira Toriyama's freaking mm. prize character, because nothing's he'll die, but he'll come back two freaking months later and just <laughs> kill everyone. <laughs> but yeah, you have to go back help him, help Go Gohan and Piccolo and all that other, basically all the other good characters. And uh, the main, it feels like, uh, God, what was that? Budokai Tenkaichi, that kind mm. of fighting style, where mm. yeah, it's exactly, it's a 3D. That's exactly what I was thinking. Mm. Continue. It, yeah, <laughs> you're uh, so full just, of shit, Tyler. <laughs> Have you played Ultimate Tenkaichi? Is it like that kind of? I, I, I haven't played Ultimate Tenkaichi. It's like it's a 3D kind of open world esque fighting game. Mm-hmm. Like you're in this area, and like you can fly around in your area, but. Though you're in a fight, like if you don't attack the whoever you're fighting, then they'll just fly right after you and just hit you and come. Well, that sounds you like Budokai death. Three to me. So it could be, it could be like, no, it's not Budokai. Okay. It's not the Budokai. It's maybe Tenkaichi and Ultimate Tenkaichi, and <laughs> but the camera angles are kind of a pain in the ass. Because when you're flying around, uh, sometimes you'll get your character will go off. You'll see you want your character will disappear, and you'll just still be getting attacked, which is kind of fucking annoying. Is there like a uh, targeting system you can that, do? Like, there's no. Like, is there a targeting? There function? is a targeting system, but for some reason, there is a targeting system, but it's not that great because in mo- most of the fights you're gonna be fighting like. Four on four, or three on three, uh, okay. like multiple people. So if you target someone, it'll just switch back and forth, like two over. Oh, who, you know what that's kind of sounds closest. like to me. Oh, that okay. kind of sounds like the late, like a lazy ass mechanic they used to play, like in old wrestling games in the PS2. You know, where like, uh, like for example, say you're facing off against a fighter, like you were doing, obviously Jacob with like uh, the your Dragon Ball Z character. But then it's like, you get close to somebody, it just switches to one, then all of a sudden it's like, if they come in the way or something while you're attacking, just switch immediately, just jarringly kind of... Uh. Mm-hmm. Well, see, the thing about the, the wrestling games, though, is like, you could, if it does yeah. that, you can switch back no problem. With this game, you, you can switch, but it'll probably just go ahead and switch back to, like, Cyberman number four. Not the one you're fighting, not the one that's punching you in the back of your skull right now. Uh, the one that's going to fight in Krillin or some mm. other no-name character. As like, I defend your like, friends. I'm, I was, well, yeah, I'll mm-hmm. get to that in a minute. Um, freaking, I was playing uh, playing earlier. I think it was last night. And um, I was fighting Nappa. I, like, I, was, I was in the Saiyan saga having to fight Nappa uh-huh. while Goku fought Vegeta. Well, we're technically in the same little area, so... Like, as I was fighting Nappa for the third time, my targeting indicator would keep going to fucking Vegeta, while souped up Nappa is just mm. beating the hell out of me. When I switch back to Nappa, oh. it would switch back to Vegeta. Oh, that's not good. Like, no, it was not good, but the game itself, like, the game looks great. Uh, I wish it played a little bit better, and uh, targeting, targeting system is a really only complaint. No way to turn it off, can you? Which... I was looking and I um, don't think so. I'll probably have to go look in more more settings after this. But going back to what I was saying earlier, the I'm currently where I'm at in the game right now is uh um instead of Ginyu taking over Goku's body, uh Raccoon hit me in front of Goku, so oh, God. guess what? <laughs> uh-huh. I switched bodies with Ginyu. Ah, classic Dragon oh, that's Ball. That's a delight. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, going with, like Switch Bodies with Ginyu is like, hey, why are you in Ginyu? Goku's like, hey, why are you in Ginyu, Spotty? Go help Gohan and Krillin. I was like, really? I I can't get my body back. I have to go protect your shitty son. Um, sorry, and Goku, but I think my body is kind of important to me. <laughs> like, ah, ah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead and help my son and my uh, my friend right here. You know, uh, I'm not really doing anything wrong. I'm gonna go masturbate in the woods. 
<laughs> it's like, I'll, I'll take care of Ginyu, uh, which is in your body, by the way, so Goku is beating the shit out of you. <laughs> so he's just completely beating the shit out of you. It's like, there can't be anybody stronger than me. I gotta beat this guy. No, it's like, Gin, like I'm in Ginyu. It's like, he tells you to go help Gohan and Krillin, which, at this point, Gohan is one of the weaker characters in the show, and Krillin's died three times. But I think he learns less. Yeah. Like, so it's like the whole point is like you have to protect them and defeat twenty enemies. And while, like, in a, right. while in a damaged like Captain Ginyu fucking state. Yeah, while in a cap- <laughs> damaged Captain Ginyu state, which you don't have your you don't have your moves. You have Captain Ginyu's moves, Ugh. and which kind of sucks. But playing his playing as him is not the problem. He's for some reason, it's super fast, which he never really is in any other, any of the Dragon Ball Z games. Mm-mm. But the problem is not fighting as Ginyu. The problem is fighting with dumbass AI Gohan and AI Krillin. <laughs> for some reason, like when it means protect Krillin and Gohan, you mean, it means protect them because apparently they can't fight to save their life. Oh God. And I've killed maybe 18, including uh, making Gold Goldo when the Ginyu Force run away like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I made him run away. He's like, so, like, keep keep protecting and kill more enemies. I keep killing and keep killing and keep killing and keep killing. <laughs> I, I, I have no items. Like, I've not seen any items that can help me revive my team. Like, I can revive myself, I can heal myself, but I cannot heal my team. Quick, use of Phoenix down. So, freaking... <laughs> so, when I freaking beat the shit out of 16, 17, and whatnot, Gohan keeps dying. <laughs> it's like, I'm at my half health bar, because I'm, I've just been fighting, like, over nearly 20 people. Like, I'm at half health bar, Krillin's, or Krillin's near full health, because, honestly... No one's going after Krillin. And Gohan, he gets his ass kicked kick every second. Like, I probably have one or two more people to kill. And Gohan dies because he can't defend himself. So basically, both Gohan and like Krillin are just like uh, ceramic vases that you got to protect from the fucking bulls in the china shop. <laughs> exactly. But unlike bulls in a, ch- or bulls in a china shop... The bulls stand in, stand in one fucking place. In one corner. <laughs> shooting. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, the thing is, so they want to fight, like, they'll kill maybe one or two by the time I've killed 12. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the thing is, though, they just, they're so bad, like, they, I'll wipe out the entire area. More enemies will spawn. They'll automatically teleport to where the enemies are, which means I have to fly all the way around the map just to go get to mm. them. And that's just mm. ridiculous. Oh, no, Jake. This game doesn't really seem to warrant... Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the situation you just uh, were in, and it's like, well, God bless. Like, no, the... Like, playing the game is fun. Like, there's just some scenarios that every Dragon Ball game has, like in Rage and Blast, where... Alright, now you have to defend Guru as Nell fighting against Frieza. But if you get hit one time, what? you die. It's like, that don't make sense. Uh... <laughs> Not in the contextual sense. I mean, Nell got his ass kicked and fucking leave the show. That's what I'm saying. It's like, if you get hit one time, basically it's over. Like, you have to win to uh... lose. And that I hated that part in Raging Blast because there was certain plot lines you can't get past like I think there was one ass Vegeta you had to do but it was like so I'm enjoying uh, Raging Blood or not Raging Xenoverse Blood, shit. I'm enjoying Xenoverse and uh, I think it's I'm trying to get people to play uh, co-op with because I know you can do co-op missions okay and uh, maybe doing it in co-op would make it a little bit easier because mm. you're not necessarily a target for like every bad guy on the room. Uh, mm-hmm. That'd be kind of funny if it made the game harder. But, like, I wouldn't mind it. Like, I wouldn't mind if it made it harder. Double the because... enemies. No. Oh, God, no. Or, you share a health bar. Not even work... 
no, 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 no. This is no battle toad shit. No way. <laughs> no, you don't share a health bar. You have your own health bar. You have your own moves. It's unlike other Dragon Ball Z games. You only really have a couple moves. Like you have your punch or your weak punch. Your strong. Your strong or you have your weak attack, your strong attack, your cob blast, and uh, dashing. You have block on your bumper. Mm. With, yeah, you have your moves and your dash. And like, but you have to combo like in, let's say Naruto, where oh, you okay. have to like right trigger and B to do like a command mm. or a big bang attack. Uh, like the thing is, okay. though, you can only have four. You can have X, or you can have for the Xbox users. X, Y, B, and A. Like, those are your special moves if you hold down mm-hmm. right trigger. Which is kind of cool because it's easy to do. You don't have to do, like, the whole super combo. But the thing is, though, like, like, when you're doing, doing them and not having that combo going on, it gives Damn. you time to run away from the attack. Because, like <laughs> I said earlier, you can just fly around the map. And it's like, kind of difficult to fight him. If you, you have, it's kind of difficult to get used to compared to the Buddha guy where it's just like a two Yeah, that would kind of sound better say if it was like actually like closed like inside of a specific section or something like that so you're not like flying all over like the whole damn yeah. map uh, oh there there is a oh. it is a arena but the arena is pretty oh. fucking big so oh that's pretty oh, cool it's, it's meant to be. It's meant to be big, so you could have the four or four fights, or the four v four fights, or three v three fights, and all the other. Okay. Yeah, like it stresses the. I want to say Battle of the Z team fights, which when it's fifteen on three is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, other than Xenoverse, uh, I've been playing a uh, Pokemon what? Shuffle. I'm awake now. <laughs> I'm, 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 what? Okay. I think Tyler just woke up from his half drunken stupor. <laughs> Ty- Tyler likes guys. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm up. Uh, no, wakes up. Just think... smells here. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let, Sweaty let's... ball sack. <laughs> Those dicko nuts. Anyway. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, since, since Tyler's enthused, I think he's been playing the same thing. Never heard of it. This is, like, a new IP as well? You're playing some weird indie <laughs> shit this week, yeah. Jake. Yeah, I know. It's like Pokemon and Dragon Ball. It's like, oh, my God, that's as far as indie as you can yeah, go. Yeah, God, we gonna be, you're a PC gamer now or something? Jesus. I need to talk about some Yu-Gi-Oh! Actually, we'll be in heaven. <laughs> God, no. Please, no more Yu-Gi-Oh! talk. Go back to Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Tyler, how far have you gotten in uh, Pokemon Shuffle? I don't. I'm. Um, I'm at ninety. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how far are you? How do you get, how do you get the replay so fast? Uh, you're in those jewels like every like ten or twenty levels, and then you you let them build up, and then you buy like more uh, turns with them, hmm. and then you. Play yeah. it nonstop. I think you've actually bought and turned. No, I've actually spent zero dollars on this game. I just been very patient. It helps that I'm like, I pretty much just play it like. All right, so I'm ashamed of this. Uh, I'm getting up early <laughs> 50 in, hours in the morning, day. and playing it for work. Using my five turns, and then I get home from work immediately. Do five. Do my five turns, and then like before I go to bed, do like my five turns. So well, that's actually get, actually that's actually pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of it's, I'm kind of ashamed of it. Too, but. but yeah, I spent zero dollars on. I I put did about nine hours in this fucking game. Did you wow. uh, do the Mew event? I have. I I Mew? caught Mew. That was a bit. I a wasted lot. about twelve turns and two days trying to get that, and like three thousand uh, coins. Right, I, I, I didn't do that. I did. I wasted about three turns. Uh, a great ball. And uh, five extra turns. Yeah, yeah, no, I used uh, I used well. I'm talking for like twelve games. Uh, I played uh, trying to get them, and then like so I used about three thousand coins to get them, and that's saying something when you only get a hundred coins for every for every level you you finish. So that's quite a bit. So yeah, I, I yeah, uh, damn it, me. Well, I'm only on the uh, sixteen. Like I just got past uh, 
Nidoran male. Yeah. Okay. So it's like I'm relatively pretty early on in it, but this game I play it like right before I go to bed or some shit, and I'm like, all right, play it tomorrow. Yep. And it's like, god damn, this game is so fun. Yeah, it, and, it's fun and it's addicting, but I'm getting it's fun to an extent. Yeah, it's well, when you get to like level seventy is when it starts to get to that. All right, this is where it's getting ridiculous kind of point where. Like you, you earn you only earn a hundred coins per level, or for every time you beat a level, um, you can buy coins with with real with real money. And the coins are like I talked about last week, give you power ups. Like you can buy an extra five moves in a, in a game. Um, uh, you get double bu- double experience points. Um, you can start off with your mega. Uh, you every you have one mega evolution uh, Pokemon in your game at a time, and you like as you match three or four with this character, it builds up this uh, bar, and when it builds up. You unleash like this Pokemon special ability, and each one has their own special ability. Um, you can use like a power up that gives you immediate Mega Evolution, and the coins are kind of hard to come by, and especially in the later levels. And uh, I'm at the point now, at level I've been stuck at level 90 for like three days now, and you're at the point where Damn. you're pretty much gonna have to use like three or four thousand coins to finish to beat this guy, and because like every like ten or twenty levels you face like an actual like an actual like Pokemon trainer. And it's you unlock a new Mega Stone after you beat this character. You unlock the the Mega Stone of the Pokemon you beat. And I'm at the point now where I'm getting 20 moves and I'm lucky to get half of his life bar knocked down. So it's it's at the point now where I if, oh it's becoming one of those. Type I'm at the games where, yeah go ahead yeah play. basically you can't earn any more coins because I can't get any more levels. And I've used up all my coins trying to beat this guy. So and you get 500 coins every day. Um, which doesn't go, which doesn't really get you much because these things usually cost the cheapest ones like 800 coins. So unless I wait a week, uh, I I can't like really I can't get the coins to beat this guy without spending some real money. Which for me I, I can almost justify. I'm nine hours in. I'm really I'm I'm enjoying it when I can play it and it's kind of fair. Uh, I can ju- I could probably justify it as five ten bucks, but I, it's just. It's just at this point, I, I'm almost wondering what's the point because I feel like it's going to be like this every battle after this after level ninety. It's just me having to spend more and more money. Yeah, have you came across any shiny Pokemon? Um, I saw one, and I I don't think I caught him though. I can go back and play him if I want to. I could, yeah, I've came across one. It was the shiny torch. Okay. I think mine was like an yeah. Eevee or something like that. No, it wasn't Eevee. It was a evolution. It was an evolved form of Eevee though. Um, that's yes, yeah. but yeah, it's like Candy Crush Saga and Bejeweled and all those Pokemon Puzzle League all combined. Into yeah, one Pokemon. Thing. Yeah, I mean, I my buddy actually told me that there's a game called like Pokemon Battle Trozzy or something like that. Trozzy, yeah, that's yeah. for the DS. It's I for three. It's actually on 3DS. Um, oh, there's one on the 3DS. Then. Yeah, it's eight that. bucks. It's a. It's a I, I watched some videos on it. It's essentially the same thing. Just I think the gameplay might be better. In the in the free, it's a full it's game, a full game, but I think the Pokemon Shuffle game is actually seems a lot more fun. There's a, it's more fleshed out. It has it's more up to date, so it has the Mega Evolutions. Um, yeah. But it's, it's basically it seems like an updated version of that. But I'm almost willing to just buy the eight dollar, uh, spend the eight bucks and get uh, Pokemon Trozzy, and just play that game. And just I think I might enjoy that one just as much as this one, and not spend any real money. I think Pokemon Puzzle League is actually on the virtual. Yeah, playlist. it's like six bucks. Yep, it's that's a, that's a good one too. It's basically we talked. I think we mentioned it last week, but it's essentially a match three game as well. Yeah, there's actually like I think there's like a couple of like uh, particular like like Pokemon Puzzle games or something like that that are on the virtual console right now. I mean, there's mm-hmm. one in resolving like gold and silver for like uh, the Game Boy Color for uh, the 3DS's virtual console and of course the, Puzzle League Challenge of course like the Wii's virtual console that you can access through the Wii U you can get to Pokemon Puzzle League the N64 classic for like about 10 bucks yep. but still there is plenty of options in uh-huh. case like nobody wants to go with Pokemon Shuffle which you know what that's entirely understandable it's a free game it's a free game I mean you might as well try it out eventually since hey it's a free game but if you want to really spend some actual money on something that's similar and you might actually enjoy it a bit better. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, Gay or Jack. We're gamers. We don't want to spend money. Everything on the internet has to be free. Uh, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I'm enjoying this game enough that I would be willing to just pay 40 bucks and just make it like a normal game. Like, I would pay... If this was like a regular game, I think I'd spend 40 bucks on it. I'm, I'm enjoying it that much. But I, it's just the fact that it's that, that free-to-play aspect just kind of 
stops me from wanting to, to put any money into it. Sean, what do you think about? Have you have you downloaded it? I never. I haven't played Pokemon Shuffle. That's why I was quiet the whole time. <laughs> should, I haven't even played it either. Should, should, you should you should totally play it. It's awesome. All right, I'll go yeah, look it up, man. Five to ten minutes. A, five to ten minutes a day. That really? That's it. That's how much. Oh, I okay. Play. I don't know about you. Like an <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> I play. I play five hours a day. I don't think it's actually possible without spending real money. You got to wait half an hour to get a game to earn one game. So. <laughs> Okay, so an hour and a half to get your two and a half games. hours. Two and a half. Oh yeah, because it's five yes. games to start off with. Yep. Uh, and I kind of want to go back, go play it right now. I'm at a stock type book. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to ignore the fact. Like, I, I haven't even turned mine off yet. It's still sitting there, and I, 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 I it's, yeah, God damn it. <laughs> My battery's almost dead, so I had to turn it's, it off. it's constantly it's constantly on but closed. Oh, I'm fucking. Uh, Loser. Oh. Well, what you guys are doing now, I think I'm just going to go back to EV training Pokemon on <laughs> Yeah. Same so, concept. Anyway. <laughs> that's honestly what I've been playing as well. I mean, I really, I've been busy with work and I just wasn't home at all last weekend. Uh, I've only got to put a couple more hours in the Majora's Mask. I like, I'm still, I've, I've put it, finished more temples and just on some side quests. I think I, I finished most of the Goron stuff. So I got the, I got the updated sword. Oh, uh, so I got yeah. the gold dust. Um, the razor sword, man. Yep, I got the I got the <laughs> permanent one though, so it doesn't like stop yep. after 100. It doesn't go back to its normal case after 100 turns. Um, so hopefully sometime this week I'm jumping into that. Also, uh, I Resident Evil Revelations 2 episode one came out this week. I was hoping to be able to play it before the week we recorded this week, but I just didn't have the time. Um, so I will probably be playing that sometime this weekend, and I will talk about it next week. Um, so that should be fun. But uh, we got we're we're like we're quite a ways into the podcast, and we got some topics this week. So for once, um, yeah. so this week we're gonna kind of jump in. We're we're gonna jump in some ones. I'm gonna go random here, uh, with it. But um, we're we're gonna jump into uh, the GTA Five because it's been about two weeks since we talked about it. It's way too long. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's too. No, it's not been enough. way too long. We haven't talked about it in twelve minutes. Uh, GTA Five <laughs> has been delayed again on the PC till April fourteenth, I believe. Uh, shocker! Mm. Uh, it... <laughs> Aha, Master yes. Race. So, and also we are getting. Um... Please don't yeah. hack me. You're totally fucking screwed. <laughs> um, we're also getting heist hey. on March the 10th. You're... It's actually a couple weeks away. Holy crap! Um, yeah, it's March the 10th, but I don't know if it's March the 10th. Yeah, they just said March the 10th. They didn't say 2015. It's true. You know, it's going <laughs> to launch with the new consoles um, in 2020. Um, is what they made March 10th, uh, but. <laughs> Yeah, so we are getting heist now, and the PC one is getting delayed. Um, does, do 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 I know Jake probably still cares. I'm I'm sure Sean. Do you do you cares? Do you play the GTAs? Yeah, I love G, uh, GTA Five. awesome. Probably oh. my favorite one. And uh, yeah, I'm glad the heists are finally finally coming out. I was <laughs> I was thinking that <laughs> the heists would finally be the new replacement for Half Life Three. Oop, or heist confirmed. Or all right, <laughs> Half Life Three or Duke yeah, Nukem. it's it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we replaced Duke Nukem there for about a year, and it was a new Duke Nukem. But now it's yeah. If unless it gets delayed again, it comes out. Um, anyone anyone want to take uh, money on bet money on if it gets delayed or not? If they no. delay it, man, I don't I don't, <laughs> I don't know what. Oh God, I don't even know what would happen. I can't even fathom the things that would happen. Like. After a year it's and a half, it's already a this... running joke. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's... I don't think they can actually shoot themselves in the foot anymore than they already have. Tanks, tanks will drop from the sky. <laughs> yes, people will put in cheap codes in, try, <laughs> that would hack, freaking their their PCs and make it make tanks drop on the on the two K studios. Or Rockstar, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Rockstar two K. You need to see Rockstar games or something like that. Just like oh, which this hard to work at like Red Dead Redemption two or something like that. All of a sudden, the tank just bursts out of the sky. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Red Dead Redemption two delayed. <laughs> I, I think we just came full circle because uh, Take Two or Two K. Oh, just Take Two, and uh, Gearbox publishes uh, yep. Take Two games or. 2K I mean, publishes shit. take two games. I yeah, yeah, I had it reversed. Sorry, and freaking Duke Nukem was also was a 2K game. Holy crap! Gearbox. That's right. Yep. 
<laughs> That's right. Holy crap. But uh, no, we talked about this like uh, like I swear to God like two weeks ago about PC the PC version being delayed. I don't know if there's much more to say on that, but no, it's pretty, that's cool that, um, for the people that held on and waited out for the, um, the heist, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad yep. it's finally coming for him, so I don't have to hear about it anymore. The wait's and, over, guys. Jake talks about it in three weeks <laughs> on the podcast, that hopefully be the end of it. Oh, uh, yes. Sh- Sean, Sean will be I'm, back that's, on. Oh, yeah. Have Just blow your about. load, get it all out of the way, so I don't have to hear about it anymore. <laughs> Heist. <laughs> it's like, yo, man, I just did this bank job that required two tanks, a freaking uh, shuttle bus, and a Titan. There you go. Well, you, you guys can record your own. You can record your own podcast about it. How about that? Uh, but no, that's pretty awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, there's no one else anything to say about that one. Let's jump on to our another topic here. Um, so this one, uh, God. So Drive Club is. It sounds like, and this isn't for sure said, but someone. And Sony said that they can't promise that we're going to get a free edition of Dry Club for PS Plus members. Oh my god, man. <laughs> I, oh, it's Dry Club. Apparently so, yeah. That does I, not, I mean, it, it's like regular ever since the whole delay for Dry Club, this has not looked good at all for Sony's. No. End. It's just been getting progressively worse and worse. Like, mm-hmm. the whole issues of the internet connection with Drive Club, and now they're not even... It looks like they're not even going to, like, uh, do their Give whole, us our free sample? Give, like, the free sample for the whole PS Plus and stuff. That is just really, really shitty. <laughs> yeah. I think if this was... La- at this point last year they started saying that, I think there'd be a little more outrage. But the fact this game is out, it kind of came out with some... Eh! Reviews... Um, had, I think that's kind of I. I really I don't care anymore. I'm upset about it. I imagine they're gonna do something to make up for it. Cause I'm sure there's people out there that waited for it. Um, uh huh. I, 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 I could see easily them like. I think it'd be cool. Hey, like, sorry guys, PS Plus members, you guys for like a week, we'll put Drive Club on sale for thirty bucks on PS Plus, and you could buy it or twenty bucks or whatever or they'll just give us something i imagine there's gonna be some sort of reward um or something to make up for this but i mean so jake and sean i don't know sean i don't know if you have a ps4 or not but do you guys uh, actually care anymore about this i want a good racing sim i really do i don't play a you lot have of a racing. you have an That's xbox one forza. <laughs> yeah you got an xbox one you got forza <laughs> No, I no. I'm, I want a simulation, not actual. Like, I don't want like that type of simulation. I want more. Of you want okay? Racing. All right. Wait, isn't Forza Horizon oh, okay. Two uh, sort of like again. that though? It's it's more. It's the sim. It's, it's, it's a sim. Forza game. It's a sim racer. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like yeah. I want more of an old classic Need for Speed type game, and I thought the crew or I think Drive Club Project been Project Car comes out I think in April, so there's that. There's hope for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully. But uh, no, I mean that sucks to hear. But I mean, I just I don't I don't think anybody cares anymore. Uh, too bad there's yeah, no, no burnout. I, I see. <laughs> yeah, right, so I see. Stopped. Maybe yeah, because uh, visual uh, visual shit. I can't even say the damn company name. They're working on the Battlefield Hardline. Visceral. And they're working on freaking Need for Speed. Yeah, Visceral. I mean, yeah. I to have like a Burnout Paradise style they're of working game on right on now. You know, that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, they're work, but they're working on Need for Speed and yeah, uh, yeah, Criterion, Hardline, which, stuff. which comes out in a couple weeks, doesn't? I think it's like March twenty fourth or something. I thought it was like seventeenth or something for Hardlines. It might be. Yeah, it's I know it's mid mid to late March. It's 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 no, okay. it's yeah. mid March. I think it comes out. I want to say seventeenth. Yeah, I think seventeenth because um, uh, Code Name Steam comes out the thirteenth, which is the Friday before. I want to I want to play a good Battlefield game, but I don't want to go back to Battlefield, well, Battlefield yeah. 4 is a good game if you could play it. If you could play with people, yeah. But uh yeah. I think some of us in here have actually played a little bit of the hard the Battlefield hardlines like beta and stuff like that. I I played I played I got Battlefield. I I got to download it. That's about as far as I got I it. I like about an hour or so of it. I like didn't some touch of it with Jake, all. but uh, <laughs> I think maybe I don't. I don't know. Uh-huh. I'm not too sure. They, I, we were talking. Well, <laughs> well I think some of us were playing. <laughs> yeah, we uh, were talking while you were playing it. While I was downloading. It. Yeah. So it was kind of with. Mm-hmm. We were with Jake while he played it. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing. No. Yeah. I was that's, with yeah. That's oh, exactly the point. He was know. waiting for like his download thing to go by. Now I'm remembering it. 
and then it downloaded. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was just <laughs> took. <laughs> here go, here go, play this yo-yo. <laughs> but uh, all right. Let's go ahead and move it on. It does come out on the seventeenth. Oh, it's the seventeenth. Okay, sweet. Um, a two thousand. Ah, that makes more sense because they gotta they gotta patch it and everything first. Um, it'll be working by March 17, 2016. But anyways, let's move on to our uh, another topic here. Um, so, exciting news, people, for people that have parties. Yeah. Uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band are make, possibly, maybe, potentially making a return to the new consoles. Yay! <laughs> Once again, I'll does anybody care? <laughs> At this point, <laughs> I never really cared about any of the music genre. Okay. Those games give me motion I sickness. Like this. All. I thought it was fun. <laughs> oh, wow. Sean, what about you, buddy? It was just one of those games that it was like the, um, like if we got tired of playing other games, it's it's not the kind of game you play alone, really, like Rock Band. You don't mm-hmm. want to play Rock Band alone. So if you have company over, it's one of those, one of those good and fun times kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I, if I hear good things about it, sure. And definitely the songs. The songs are an important feature. So if I see there's good songs on there, then not, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a swing. Not not many people like not many people like Rock Band Three, did they? Uh, I don't think anybody. It was more just it was basically Rock Band Two with more yeah. tracks. They did have more the like the you can actually use like a real guitar kind of thing. Huh. I don't know. I mean, mm. my thing looking at it though is, um. I ha- I still like I'm literally looking right now at my closet, and I have rock. I have my drum set. I have my two guitars. I have my microphone sitting over there. I have Rock Band one, two, and three on freaking Xbox 360 still sitting over there. Um, I en- I enjoy the Rock Band games. They're fun. Uh, the Guitar Hero games. I enjoyed the first two. Um, obviously Rock Band grew upon those. Um, I just I think a big part of it is I mean can we can we carry over our DLC our, our DLC songs we bought because I have like. Put them to uh, mm-hmm. the rock band music store. Yeah, cloud. If if we can keep that, that's great. Cause I have like eighty dollars in DLC content that I probably you know fifty sixty songs there I've purchased. And then um, you know I do I have to buy a new drum set and everything for this because that's gonna be a big thing. I know right, like I, I've, right. I've read some stuff on it. I, I guess because we they use different. I mean I don't know the technical side of it, but they don't use the same wireless signal that. You know, like the, the 360, the Xbox One, you had to buy an adapter for, for your headset. Same with the PS3 to the PS4. The only thing, I guess, like, um, they're saying that if they make the Rock Band or Guitar Hero game for the Wii U, that they you because you can obviously use the Wiimotes for the uh, for the console, for the uh, Wii U, you'd be able to use, if you bought, you're one of the few that bought Rock Band on the Wii U or Guitar Hero on the Wii U, you are the Wii, the original, I'm sorry, the original Wii. Finally! <laughs> it paid, it off. paid off! Because <laughs> you, should, you should be able to, because they it still use the same... in the end. Yes, it works, you get the same wireless signal, you should be able to use the rock, the, the guitar and the drums and everything, so... I, I imagine you... They're, they're probably doing an adapter, they, they have to, because I, I can't see people wanting to shell out, because you can't, you can't nope. get rid of these damn things, like, GameStop doesn't take them, like, no like, store around... You walk in... You walk into GameStop with a drum set and a guitar attached mm-hmm. to you. Like, I tell you yeah, I've, I've been in GameStop a, like at least two or three occasions, and people were trying to sell those things, and like we don't take those. And you know, you can't give these. You can you can't sell these things for. They're not worth any money. You just see they're some not, random person going yeah. inside the GameStop or something with a whole like a, like plastic like drums and guitar. All of a sudden, the next all of a sudden the next moment uh-huh. you see them throwing out of the store all their dip splines and equipment just get thrown. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they I mean they they stop taking you them. You suck, like boo. <laughs> the only way you can get rid of these those equipments is take them to a place a pawn shop. The pawn shops take take, take them to Gabe or... or Jack. No, you know what you know what people mail them, what's mail them like, to Jack. There, there's a there's you a store know that takes what the that number one place around, I around have personally I've seen a lot of these like recite these old friggin' Guitar Hero stuff. The Goodwill. They're always at the yep. goodwill, either in one shape or another. Ever since I've worked at that place, it seems like you can't go a week without seeing another plastic guitar, another freaking drum set, or another couple B dealies or something like from the PS2 or the Wii or the fucking like PS3 adapters or something like that for the Guitar Hero rock band yep. stuff. 
So what gate? But did Jack it all come with the game, or just the... <laughs> for old unneeded shit? People always give it a Was it will. just? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> What were you saying, Sean? It was just the instruments. So it was just the instruments, Very not the game rarely. itself. So even if they do get the Very instruments, rarely that the game to, itself gets dropped. I'll have to wait for the game <laughs> to even use the thing. Yeah. Okay. Or or they'll yep. pick up the game at GameStop for like three dollars, and they'll go to Goodwill and pick it up. This I've actually the heard like uh, employees of GameStop yeah. tell people if they wanted to buy those equipment, they should go to the fucking Goodwill. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> I don't. I just I look at it from that standpoint. I, I think a big part of selling point to a lot of people is the instrument side. Where, I mean, I, I think a lot of people like think about either they still have them sitting in their closet somewhere, or they in their basement or their attic, or they got rid of them because they never they rarely ever use them. I think that's going to be a big hump for them is if they can find a way so you can actually use your old ones, or make it uh, cheaper to buy them because buying the whole set for like Rock Band Two yep. was like 120 bucks, I think. And then, like, the, the, the I remember, like, the oh. Beatles one was, like, $250, so. Oh, dude, the Beatles one's post-launch skyrocket. Yeah, so they're even, I'm sure, they might be cheaper now, but I know at the time they were crazy expensive. So, I mean, I think that's going to be the biggest hump for them is just finding a way to get people to want to buy, if, if we have to, buy the freaking, the insurance again. But uh, let's go ahead and move on mm-hmm. to uh, another topic. Um, this one I know um, Jake can go ahead and uh, he can go do what he wants because I know he doesn't care. Uh, but I really don't even know if I care that much. But Amiibos are potentially, uh, potentially, potentially uh, rumored <laughs> to be. A, I'm not the only one to fuck up. <laughs> they're according to a Walmart um, poster. We might be seeing a uh, exclusively at Walmart. It sounds like uh, gold Mario Amiibos. Just mm. hit me. Give me fifty dollars. I'll. I'll take everyone on off the shelf that's fine it. sounds like a scalper's dream yes <laughs> yeah Th- those things are gonna go for hundreds of dollars i'm sure so i'm buying as many oh, as i can no buy. shit just get just uh, send me a hundred hundred two hundred dollars and i'll pick everyone up for you and i'll sell them for triple okay they'll probably just sell them for like about 50 bucks a piece yeah i don't <laughs> so i mean i know I know Jack's got a handful. Uh, Sean, do you have any Amiibos? I have zero. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Good for you. Good job. <laughs> I'm not addicted to Crackle. Y'all. As he plays Pokemon Shuffle. <laughs> Jack, so how many How many do you have? He's counting. Six. Six? Yeah, uh, they're on my bookshelf. Oh, very nice. I have, I have my one, my Luigi. He sits on my coffee table. I like, to, I like to stare at him from time to time. You know, what's kind of ironically about that. I went back to Walmart or something like that like a day or two ago, and that was the only type of figure that was there <laughs> from the last time I was at yeah. Walmart and got those figures. Well, I know a handful are dropping in price now to like $10, like I think Donkey Kong, Yoshi, and Peach. Peach? But, um, anyways, so I don't know. This is just getting insane. Like, I mean, I, I guess it's... Yep. Wave 4 is coming out soon. Um... Now we're getting we're getting the the Mario Party ones, which is just slightly they're just different looking statues of the Smash Brothers yep. characters. Now now we're getting gold Mario's. I mean, it's only a matter of time before we we get all eight hundred and ninety two thousand Pokemon amiibos. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I want to freaking explode Pokemon amiibo. I want the the ice cream cone oh amiibo. Vanilla. Vanilla. Yes. <laughs> I want the trash bag Pokemon amiibo. <laughs> he gets the fucking Garbodor one with the exploding garbage bag amiibo. <laughs> and yes, uh, I know that Pokemon. What is this too. trash? Everybody uh, listening. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I will admit that it'd be kind of cool to have. Like, if I, I, I will try to get one of these gold ones, but I'm not going to go like crazy out of my way to get one. But I don't know. I think this is just, God, I don't know. This is getting insane to me. Like, have you? I'm, I'm curious. Are you guys at all kind of interested in, in getting any amiibos? Have you tried to like get any of the the hard ones to find? Or what, what are you guys' thoughts on the amiibos? There's only like one more I want to get, and that's Ness for Earthbound. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> the only one I'm interested in is the Captain Falcon one. So I'm I oh, have not seen those in too. stores at all. Yeah, I, there's a there's a like if you're on Twitter, there's a Twitter account called like Amiibo News. 
and he constantly posts on there like whenever like they find the hard the hard to find ones in stock they'll constantly put them on uh-huh. there and then like and people go on there and buy them so that's like honestly like the best way to find them i think um as far as like he basically okay. go on all the websites and tell you when they're up on like bestbuy.com or gamestop.com or whatever but no like oh, right, now, right now the only ones I'm, I'm super interested in is the marth just for codename steam so i'm waiting for that one yeah good luck with that you know what's kind of funny like during their actual launch like release for those fucking amiibo figures i had a chance to buy a marth but then it's like okay there's there's Star Fox, there's marth there's these other characters here that uh, the Wii Fit train, the Animal Crossing like guard and stuff like that. I go back a week later because I didn't want to buy them. They're all gone. Yeah, those things are. <laughs> hard to... Yeah, they're going for like Martha's going for like fifty bucks right now on Amazon, and God, fuck Holy those cow. people. Yeah, <laughs> but Mar- they're re- they're releasing oh, Marth for for Codename Steam. So there you go. So I will I will probably I imagine it's going to come out around the same time as Codename Steam. So I'll pick it up then. Yep. Um, but going on to another topic here, uh. I don't know if you guys heard about this. I'm kind of trying to figure out. Maybe you guys can explain to me why this is such big news and people are upset about this. But according to uh, Sony, really, uh, or I guess uh, not Sony, Bungie, um, with the whole PlayStation 4 share play where you can, you know, I, I can let Jake or something like go jump into my account and play my game with under my saves or anything like that. Uh, some 22-year-old kid said, I'm going to, I'm going to, told some other guy he was going to, or just like some teenager it sounds like um like hey i'll help you play destiny what's we'll your share play he did share play and i guess the younger kid walked away and on there's a video of it actually out um the 22 year old went in and deleted this kid's like 100 plus hour uh game save of destiny oh what a dick <laughs> that is fucking bullshit that that's a thing that can actually happen so apparently the, now this is like national news it's like on everything. Um, it's fucking national news. It's like it's not like you know, world news. Yeah, tonight. world news it's, tonight. With it's Peter not sixty Donald minutes. Peter like, it, yeah, it's not the opening oh, story on fi- the five o'clock news. But um, it's on Fox News. Yeah, it's on. It's on <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> so there's a video, and you guys need to watch it. it basically, My this life guy is comes over. Like, this kid literally comes oh, back and starts God. crying when he finds out his save his save has been can't, has been deleted. Oh, that's sad. It sucks. That's really bro. sad. But why would you let him? First off, why is a random stranger letting uh, some? Like, why is this kid letting a random stranger into his account? Second off, um, it gets it gets even crazier when the um the mother of the twenty two year old comes out and defends him. Apparently, the twenty two year old was in a car accident a few months ago and is all is all hopped up on pain pills. He doesn't know what he's doing. And he oh actually d- accidentally deleted this game save. I'm trying to figure out why the fuck anybody cares about this. Why? Why? <laughs> I mean, it was like the it was all over my Twitter earlier this week. Like everybody's talking about it. This is news. Yes, that's what this. That's what my. That's why I put in the show notes. Why is this news? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Like I feel like I understand the kids' problems. Like. He just lost a shit ton of hours playing. Oh God, what are you gonna do again now? Oh yeah, you're gonna still play the damn yeah. game. I. Oh, I have other games in my library to play other than Destiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's a thirteen year old kid. It, I'm, he's got plenty of free time. I'm sure he can get that back in a couple weeks. The but kid is fucking you know what? Thirteen. Yeah, he's a 13 he has kid. a lot of time. He has to more play life. Shit. To him. <laughs> yeah. I know a guy who started, he deleted his freaking 32, and then a day later, 32. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I, I just... I was like, really? Uh, I just think it's just so crazy how... I mean, I don't really have much like to say. I just, I'm just shocked that people care. I was just curious if you guys cared. Like, like if, I, if I'm losing my mind, if I'm out of touch with with um, today's society. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm sorry for the kid that got his saves, you know, like, uh, deleted and stuff like that, but at the yeah. same time, it's like, he kind of mm-hmm. did the stupidest thing possible, and that by letting a stranger not only share his account, but also, you know, giving him clear access, because he pretty much could have done whatever the hell he did, which he did, and uh, that's, you know, yeah. I just don't feel sorry for the kid. He was stupid enough to do it. You know, it- I have empathy for him. But I do not have sympathy. Yes, for him. Yeah. I understand your problem. Yeah, but totally. get mad because you have to play game again. Oh yeah. no. Yeah, I don't know. So we're we're running a little, we're a little, actually a little over on time this week. 
So uh, we're going to jump into the, uh, I guess, the, the, the end of the show uh, with uh, Jack. What is your wrestler of the week? Wrestler of the Week has to involve Samoa Joe. Yeah. Now, Samoa Joe, indie darling, back when he first started out, he was going around certain, like, going around promotions, like, like, uh, like, PWG or something like that? Yep, for Wrestling Gorilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, PWG, Ring of Honor. He was known, like, he was known, like, very much so during those promotions. As of late, though, he's been inside the news again over the past couple weeks as uh, his talks with with TNA have pretty much just declined and stuff. They wouldn't re-up his offer or something because I believe he wanted more for his contract. And now it's kind of up in the air where exactly what he's going to do. Is he going to retire? Is he going to go to another promotion? You know, he's going to go back to either PW, like PWG or... Uh, like uh, he'll be in WWE in a month. Uh, he's actually signed off for some dates in Ring of Honor already. He's gonna be in Ring of Honor TV next month. Oh, there you go. So yeah, breaking Ring news of, of the Honor. podcast. Didn't know that. That's fucking awesome yep. right there. Because when yep. Samoa Joe was in Ring of Honor, he had some fantastic matchups. Because you know what's important about this Samoa Joe wrestler in general is he was among the core group of guys back in the mid two thousands that are that people absolutely love watching today. Guys like Daniel Bryan, guys like CM Punk, Nigel McGuinness, just a whole bunch of these indie wrestlers that created this blossom sort of like uh, like spark in the indie scene and stuff for basically, more people to become watching. Yeah, basically brought back the indies after the whole WCW, ECW thing. He is one of the toughest son of a guns I've ever seen wrestle inside like matches and stuff. There is this particular match, this particular like hardcore match that he has with this dude, where there is a reason why the crowd, whenever they see Samoa Joe and whatever he's beating the opponent, his opponents and stuff like that, they chant the line, Joe's gonna kill you. The reasoning behind that is inside one of his matches, Joe did this like fucking like exploder type of uh you know this type of like wrestling move or something like that with the exploder. I'm just making like hand motions right now for the people that are <laughs> not watching. So basically, type of, like an exploder type of like, you know, like a fall thing or something like that on the ring apron. He mm-hmm. did it so hard to his opponent that his opponent was literally his forehead was just busted open. It did not look any type of like cuts or any type of like, uh, you know, knifings or something like that that you know the general professional wrestlers do from time to time you know to bleed what, to make these wasn't, it was the hard way it wasn't he didn't it he didn't was the hard the way to bleed yep. and so from that on forward it was whatever, also he was he was wrestling necro butcher i've seen the match he was wrestling necro butcher and stuff and cm punk was on the commentary yep and cm punk made the most infamous line and said somebody's gonna die tonight <laughs> yep but, yes, Moa Joe, he's known for that. He's known for his, like, uh, well, let's see, his rear naked choke. That dude, when he puts on the fucking rear naked choke, it looks authentic because the mm-hmm. way he applies pressure to the, the opponent's neck, it almost looks like he's going to pop somebody's neck like a fucking grape because yep. he has that distinct demeanor, he has that attitude, he has that, just that charisma. charisma and stuff. That sets him apart from other type of professional wrestlers. He looks like someone that can actually kick the shit out of him and yep. stuff. So, that's our wrestler for the week, Samoa Joe. <laughs> All right, very nice. And also, so Jake, what do you have for trivia this week, my friend? Uh, my trivia involves you turning out for the next thirty seconds. What? My trivia. Oh is Jesus! Ball Z, Buddha, uh, God, I'm opening my Pokemon <laughs> Shuffle game. I've heard another heart. Yeah. All right. Well, we all know uh, Budokata sets tone for uh, kind of bad games to follow. Mm-hmm. But uh, in Budokata Three, there's a full 3D model of Bulma, mm-hmm. Vegeta's wife, Trunks's mother, mm-hmm. yada yada yada. And in the game's code, Bulma's unplayable unless you use a cheat device to use her. 
She is just a character model that has no moves and or skills that can be set as an alternate costume for Videl. Huh. <laughs> interesting. That's actually yeah, kind of interesting so that they actually don't... had the idea of trying to put her inside the game. <laughs> I guess that one scene where Ginyu took over Bulma for an episode and a half. I guess that was enough for canon, I'm guessing, but... <laughs> I can understand why they didn't uh, actually go ahead, like, just go went on with it, though. Yeah, because Bulma versus Super Saiyan 4, Goku, or Vegeta. That would be fucking funny as shit. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a bit one-sided. No. Bulma too strong. Bulma <laughs> <laughs> too strong. <laughs> and that's the trivia of the week, Tali. Uh, I'm, I'm almost done. I got 13, 13 moves left. Um, oh, shit. So you can find us. On, I'm going to do this while playing the game. This is, this is how good I am. You can find us on. You can find no, us not. on Facebook. Uh, we are on, on there. We have a group and a page. Uh, Gen Game Generation Gaming. We're also on Twitter. Gen Gaming Net. You can. We, we do streaming from time to time on Twitch. We are Gen Gaming Net on there as well. We are about to record some bonus content on our YouTube page. It is going to. It is Gen Gaming Net, all one word. Uh, does anybody else have anything else to say before we end the show? Pumper nickel. Puppet, thank you. <laughs> Sean? Okay, uh, Uni is bad. <laughs> and you'll never see Sean again after this. So, let's... Uh, th- <laughs> that was our show for the week, guys. Right. Uh, thank you, Sean, for joining this us. You, all, uh, you, sh- so. you should also be... I think you'll be joining us for the bonus content. Uh, yeah. I was your host this week. I was Tyler. Yeah, I'll stay. All right. I was Tyler. I was the Jack of Hearts. I was Jake. And special guest Sean. Alright, we will see we will see you guys next week. Bye. Peace son. Later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>